important. This is something that we wanted to begin the year with because if you don't understand righteousness in your nation, you'll never have victory over the devil. Did you hear what I said? If you don't understand righteousness in your nation, you will never have power over the devil. Now, I want to do just a little bit of recapping. You need to go back and watch the video service that we did two weeks ago to get the full impact of this, but I'm going to try to recap just a little bit. Um, Van began uh, by talking about David and Goliath and, the, and how you, you've got to just go listen to how Van shared. It was really awesome. And the righteous enemy nation that he had, and he was determined, man, this giant is going to have no power over the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God. I operate with that power. And, and so he, you listen to that story. Then he went on to, to share um, about um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, we will not bow and we will not burn. And they, they were determined, you are not going to make us do anything against the kingdom of God. They were determined that they would not be defeated. And then you know the fourth man, the image of Jesus, the Son of God, was right there in the fire when they, didn't even, they came out not even smelling like smoke. And like Van said, they turned up the, the flame seven times hotter now, I mean, if you're in a fire, you're in a fire. You know, you're going to burn. Whether it's, you know, I mean, if I'm, if I'm cooking a roast and I put it in the crock pot, it may take, if I put it in the crock pot and I cook it a long time and I have it on low, it's still going to get done. It's still going to cook until, you know, it may take 10 hours and that's when it's good and, you know, and it just melts in your mouth. But the thing is, they were going to burn regardless. Well, those that put them in did burn. You know, so you go and you walk, listen to those stories. Van did a real good job of uh, portraying those. We want to go on down, though, so that we can get through what we want to share today. Um, but we're bringing it all together. And then we talked about the verse in Ephesians 4, um, 25, where it said, um, actually 26, where it says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give any place to the devil. You have to make a choice. You are not going to take your foot off that guy's throat. The devil will not have a stronghold in your home. All right? So that was, we shared that, and we went on down, and I, I shared the verse, Hebrews 10, 35. I want you to be able to write these down so you can catch up with us. Go back, listen to the, everything that we shared. But it says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Confidence is assurance, assurance, boldness, and cheerful courage. Cheerful courage. You know, where you are determined, man, I am confident that the devil will not have a stronghold. And like we said, you don't give him an inch or he'll become a ruler in your life. You have to, you have to take a stand. I will not. I will keep my anger towards the devil. That is, that is righteous anger. That is. All right? So, um, then we talked about how if the thief steals, he has to repay sevenfold. We told you the story of the evangelist who, who um, and you'll have to listen to the story. We're not going to tell the story, but he ended up losing $3,000 by a man who did him wrong. And he believed God, and every day he got up and said, Lord, I thank you. The devil has to repay sevenfold. And then a year to the day later, a man called him up and wanted to meet him for breakfast. He went and met this man for breakfast. And he said, let me just get to the point. You don't know me. I know you. And the Lord told me the devil stole $3,000 from you. And he said, here. And he gave him $21,000 in cash. Y'all, I'm telling you, we want to teach you how to walk in the boldness against the devil and not let him have a place in your life or in the life of your children. We're going to be sharing examples uh, of our own life and things that happened concerning Javan and how he watched what we were doing. Your children are always watching. They will do more what they watch you do than what you tell them to do. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. They will do more of what they watch you do than what you tell them to do. So if you are walking boldly before the throne of God and you are standing against the devil, then they too will learn how to do that. That's right. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and before we go any further, I just have to give this one, this one testimony. This is the coolest thing. Um, and if, it, if we take till next week, y'all, this, this stuff is key. 
But when, and we were sharing this with Kevin and Lynn last night, and I, I said, ma'am, i got to share that tomorrow. But Javan had watched Van and myself and how we handled when trials came in our life, and he watched what we did, and he saw us take authority over the devil. And one day, this bird, and some of you have heard this, most of you haven't, Javan's five years old, and this bird flew in. We have a window and a sliding glass door um, and windows above that. Oh, and dick on our deck and this bird flew in because the window was so clean not it isn't always but it was so clean that day the, the the bird thought he was going to fly into the house and he hit that window and he fell to the ground when he fell to the ground or fell to the deck i'm telling you the bird was dead i'm telling you that bird was dead and i tell you how i know his head fell off to the side it wasn't even connected anymore and his and he rolled over and his feet were up like this i call that dead so <laughs> You know, so Javan said, Javan said, uh, Mama. I said, what? He said, we got to pray for the bird. And I'm like, oh, okay. Let's go pray for the bird. Now, I will be totally honest with you. My faith was not there for this bird. The bird is dead. The bird is dead. And Javan got this righteous indignation, and we're going to talk about the, what that means in just a minute. But Javan, he said, Mama. That bird's going to live. And he went out and he said, we're going to pray for this bird. And so we prayed for the bird. Javan prayed for the bird. And we stood out there for a while and he looked at me and he said, when the bird, when the bird flies, he, before he goes, he wants some water. I said, okay. So he said, let's get a bowl and we'll put it out here for the bird. Faith prepared. Faith prepared. It does prepare. Mm -hmm. It does prepare. So he goes and gets the bottle, the, I mean, the, uh, the bowl of water yeah. and puts it out right next to the bird. But not where it was in, in way of our view. And then Javan looked at me. He said, now, you know, that bird's not going to come back to life and fly if we're standing here. So I said, so what do you want us to do? Mm -hmm. He said, let's go inside and we'll sit right there and we'll look out the, the sliding glass door in the dining room and we'll watch. I said, and okay. I I was working at Delta at the time, and I was off that day. It was really amazing all of so, us were doing that. So we went and sat down there <laughs> for a long time, y'all. I mean, we sat there, and 20 minutes went by, 30 minutes You know minutes how in those by. movies, when they try to make things go off into the future, <laughs> they've got a calendar that goes, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way we felt like that. <laughs> so we're just sitting there, and I forgot you were there. I was thinking you were at work, but that's no. right. And so we're... <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting there. I did not speak one negative word. Did you hear what I said? I did not speak one negative word. But she did look at me with some like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so at this point, Javan is leading the roost. And we, we are sitting there. We're watching. And y'all, I declare, oh my gosh. About 45 minutes had gone by. Yeah. And... Javan's just, I mean, Javan didn't take his eyes off that bird, and he just said, thank you, Jesus. And he made us stay there at this sliding glass door. We couldn't do it from the sofa or something. We no, had, we had to sit there. We had to do this. <laughs> and I'm telling you, he was so excited. I, I, I got excited, man. It, it taught me something. You know, you can, you know, the, <laughs> the Lord said, unless we become like a little child. Y'all, so many times we get so analytical. We just, we just destroy our own ability to believe God by our analytical thinking. So anyway, so we're sitting there, and, and um, all of a sudden, y'all, that bird, like that, and his, net, his head is off, I, I, not connected. I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I wish I had a picture. But because I didn't expect to happen what happened, I didn't have a picture. So at that time, the bird kind of jerked a little bit. Like, and I looked, and man, I looked at each other, and Javan said, Long, see? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He, this is Javan. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He's just thanking the Lord and praising God. And oh, my goodness. And about that time, the bird rolled over, and his head was still laying off to the side. He just sat there for a long time. None of us moved. And then. All of a sudden, his head came up, and it went. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right, honey? That's right. All right. All right. Anyway. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Joanne said, see, I told you. Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you.
you do? This is Javan, right? He was so excited. So we're waiting to see. I don't remember. I honestly can't remember whether he drank the water or not. But He did not drink the water. He didn't drink the water. Okay, he didn't drink the water. Mm -hmm. And so Javan said, in the, and he, Javan did, didn't get real loud. He said, in the name of Jesus, fly. In the name of Jesus, fly. And about that time, we had a bench on the, uh, on the, the deck that then had the railing behind it back then. We didn't have that. We rebuilt it. But anyway, the bird, I mean, Javan's five. Just turned. <laughs> and he, about that time, the bird jumped up on the seat and just sat there for the longest time. Javan said, fly. In Jesus' name, fly. At that time, he jumped up on the top of the ledge. And not much longer after that, then all of a sudden the bird just flew off. And I said, Lord, I repent. <laughs> you know, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. And I'm telling you, that changed my life watching what happened with our child. With the bird. With the bird. Yeah. And what Javan did, and he believed God. He believed God for everything that happened. Y'all, that's amazing. That's miraculous. This is a dead bird. Was dead. How, do you, how many of you think the same principle works with people if you're raising somebody from the dead? Same thing. Now, y'all remember last week at healing school, you know, we, we, had, um, we had told you the story the week before of how we had, uh, there was a family that had been a part of the church for years, and then they kept having babies, and then they live an hour and a half away from the church, and finally it got to be too much to bring all those children as they kept having babies. And so by the seventh baby, and she was born with uh, a heart malfunction, and, and she had holes in her heart, and, and her arteries were going all kinds of different directions. And they, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, they were waiting for her to get to a certain number of months before they could correct some of these things. And she was in the hospital um, at Scottish Rite Hospital, and she died. The baby died. And um, Dina called me on the phone, and she told me, said, I knew who to call. She called, me, called us on the phone, and we both got on the phone. And I mean, righteous indignation. I was so angry at Satan. I yelled out, no, in the name of Jesus. She will live. And she will declare the works of the Lord through testimony. And I was, we were so, Van and I were both just praying, and we were believing God and, and, and commanding. And within, I don't know, it was about, I don't know, it was 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. Anyway, she came back to life. And as you saw, and I had no idea when I shared this the week before that Dina was going to bring the baby no, last week. No, we didn't week. know she was coming. How many of you were here and saw the baby last week? And she's a little over a year old now, but she was raised from the dead just like that bird. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was amazing. And, and then we went to the hospital, but she's a little over a year old. She's doing great. There's a few things they're still believing God for concerning her health. But y'all, I'm telling you, you have raising from the dead power on the inside of yes. each and every one of you. Do you understand yes. what I'm saying to you? You have raising from the dead power on the inside of you, and we are not going to stop until every last one of you grab a hold of this and say, I will see these miraculous things in our family. And go ahead, baby. I was going to say, a lot of people <clears throat> have the misconception that you can see these kind of things happen on a regular basis and not have righteous indignation. It doesn't work that way. You've got to, you've got to be angry and do not sin. You've got to be angry towards the enemy. You've got to That's be right. angry towards the works of the enemy. And you've got to express that anger, that righteous anger, right. through the word, through speaking the word, declaring the word, and refusing to believe the circumstances and against all hope, in hope, believe. And you'll see those results. And, you know, a lot of times if, you, if that hasn't been the case in your life, then get started. I mean, right. start somewhere, you know, where you feel like you can start. But don't settle. Don't let the rest of your life go and you stay on the sidelines watching the game. You want to be in the middle of the game. 
That's right. God put you in the middle of the game. He didn't put you there to be a spectator. He put you there to, to, be, to walk in authority as his child and to, to, to do the works. Greater works shall you do because he went to the Father. And the, the main thing, though, that we're driving home and the reason why we're spending the kind of time we're spending on this is because you have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. You have to be sick and tired of the enemy doing anything in your life. Not just sick and tired. It's just where you feel like you, you know, being robbed. He's taken advantage of you. He's he's killed the deal that you had going a great deal for your company. Uh, you know, you you anything that comes along, the the the, the handprint, the fingerprints are on the enemy. Then you've been robbed. That's right. And what you have to do is you have to be, you know, we say with children or raising children or whatever, you know, you need to be understanding, you know, and you need to be, uh, have grace and mercy and you need to teach them and raise them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. The Lord. But this is the devil we're talking about. You don't owe him any courtesy. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't respond to courtesy. He doesn't That's respond right. to grace. You need to hate evil. The Bible says to despise evil. To abhor evil, abhor evil, just to absolutely abhor it, detest right. evil and any works of evil, and this and the the man him, or the the angel himself, the fallen angel himself, the devil. We are to hate his guts, amen, and not tolerate anything. But you de demonstrate that hatred by the word and That's by right. not settling for what Jesus paid such a heavy price for you not to have to settle for. You know, we have a lot of scriptures we want to share, but I want to share this. What happened six months prior to Javan praying for the bird, this is what Javan observed. When Javan was three and a half years old, at that time he was still having seizures. There was, there was um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Javan was a very sick baby. He had so many things. We were in and out of the hospital. He had to take phenobarbital for to sustain, st to stop the seizures. And then Van ended up with, Brooklyn. I'm not going to go into all of this because many of you know the whole story, but, but for those of you that don't know these stories, this is very important and this helps teach you what your children are watching. So um, Van broke his leg and, and he had a rod, his leg was broken in, in two places and that's a, that's a long story, so we're not going to even go there. He was in the hospital for... 10 days right through Christmas, Javan and I would go see him every day. And, and so when Van got home, he ended up, and we, like I said, we can't go into all of this. I just hit in the high spots. When Van got home from the hospital, he had to be out of work for two months. What the devil meant for bad, God turned around for good. And we were sick and tired of being sick and tired in our house. And I mean, I was, I was spitting mad. I was so mad. Because this one particular day, um, Van and I, well, Van and Javan and I all got in the word. I mean, we were watching Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Savelle, all these, all these people back in the day that, you know, they were powerful faith teachers. And we, we didn't know Andrew at the time, but we were just getting into everything we knew. We were in the word every single day, just filling ourselves up with the word of God. And so this one day, Javan, Javan wouldn't get a common cold. He'd get spinal meningitis symptoms, just deathly crazy garbage. And this one day, his, he uh, got really sick, and I knew, I said, I've got to take him to the doctor. So Van's laid up, and I, I carried Javan to the doctor, and the doctor said, he has such a severe case of pneumonia, I want to put him in the hospital. I said, no. No, I don't want to put him in the hospital. Let me take him home. I said, give him whatever medicine you want to give him, do whatever you want to do, but I'm taking him home. Righteous indignation. And I said, I'm, I'm, I believe he's going to be fine. So the doctor looked at me, and he took me by the shoulders, and he said, listen to me. I don't know why I'm letting you do this, but I'm going to let you take him home. But and he said, listen to me and look at me when I'm talking to you. I'm going to, he was very serious, and he said, if, he, if any one of these seven symptoms, and he named seven things, I'm not even going to proclaim. He came out with these seven symptoms. If, if any one of these seven symptoms get on his body, you get him to the emergency room or he could die. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? I said, yes, I heard you. And he said, any one of these seven symptoms get on his body, he can die. I said, I heard you. I left and I rebuked everything that man said. 
I said, he will not die. And I took him home, and I'm just praying in tongues all the way home. I got home, and, and I told Van. I didn't declare Javan to have it. I said, this is what the dire do doctor diagnosed him with. We prayed over him. He got better. Two days later, I'm ministering to two different women on the telephone. Now, Javan's watching all of this. And I, I ministered to two women on the phone. One, her husband just left her, and I was on the phone with her for an hour. And then another one, her daughter was very sick. And I ministered to her on the phone. When I got off the phone, I went back into the living room. All seven, listen to me, all seven symptoms came on that boy's body. And within 20, 15, 20 minutes or so, he went from no fever to 104 and a half. And he crawled up in my lap, and fear tried to come over me. Do you hear what I said? Fear. But God didn't give me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And I'm sitting there, and all along, I cried every day for fear that Javan wouldn't be alive the next morning with all the sicknesses and things he had. It was so difficult when, in those first three years. And, and the devil just wanted to kill him because of the call of God in his life, and, I, and we knew that. And uh, so Van and I, I we, we, we started praying over him, and I told Van, I said, listen, this, I've, you've been stronger in your faith about Javan's health than I've been. I said, but right now I could feel righteous indignation rising up in the side of me, and I mean a gift of faith rose up in me, and I knew that I knew that I knew Javan was healed. And I was so, I was so mad, I could spit nails literally. I am telling you what, I could have built a house with the nails I spit. I'm, I was so mad. I was so mad. And I, the day before, I had watched a, a, a newscast show, a thing about this woman who had been put in prison because her son died because she re refused medical treatment. And he died. And he, she was a Christian scientist. And I said, you know what? I said, God, either your word is true or it's a lie. Either by the stripes on Jesus' back, we walk in health, or we don't. And you are not a respecter of persons. That's what your word says. I'm standing on your word, and I'm going to believe God, and I am not putting up with this anymore. I am not. I'm done. I've had it up to here. I'm through. Because if I go to the hospital, they're just going to do all this stuff. They don't know what to do anyway. And they'll put him in an, on an IV, and they'll do all this stuff, and he'll still have seizures. He'll still be sick. I'm done. And, I, and so I said, Lord, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch a miracle. I am not going to the hospital. Now, the devil won't stop. He will hound you to pieces. And he, and on and one side, I, I heard this voice, the doctor saying, he could die. And then instead of being, he could die, it was, he could die, he could die. And I'm going, stop. And I, I mean, literally, you've had the devil talk to you like that. And I had to grab my head and I said, no, no, in the name of Jesus. And I quietened that voice. You have to quieten the voices. Did you hear what I said? You have to quieten the voices. And I said, no. And then I, and then I saw this woman in prison behind bars. And then it was me. And I said, stop, in Jesus' name. And I just began to sing in the spirit. I heard a pastor say one time that singing in the spirit is the highest form of praise. And I just began singing in the Spirit. Van and I were singing in the Spirit. And within another 20 minutes, every symptom left that boy's body. Every symptom left that boy's body. From that day to this, he never had another seizure. He never missed a day of school for sickness. Now, some of you have not heard that story. Some of you have. But you know what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. You can't hear these testimonies enough. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Javan lived that testimony. So six months later, he spoke to the bird. Amen? Your children are watching you. What are you showing them? What are you telling them? What, how are, what kind of life are you leading before them? Are they seeing righteous indignation in you? Are they seeing you stand against Satan? I want you to think about it. Y'all, this is serious stuff. You don't play with this kind of stuff. You don't play with fire, you rebuke it. You stomp it out with the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. 
<clears throat> Amen? Amen? So there are more stories we're going to share of testimonies, but now we want to get in the Word because we, we, we're running out of time. I want to, let's go back to, um, I want to talk about what righteous, righteousness, righteous is, and, you know, righteous is right standing with God. Everybody knows that, but let me read this from the, the Greek. Righteousness, the condition acceptable to God, the doctrine concerning the way in which man may attain a state approved of God, of integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. If your thinking doesn't line up with the word of God, cast those thoughts down to the obedience of Christ. If your thinking does not line up to the word of God, cast those thoughts down to the obedience of Christ. What was the obedience of Christ? The finished work of the cross. He already paid the price. He paid the price for that bird as much as he paid the price for that baby last week. Do you understand what we're saying? And this is important. So, Act your uh, correctness of thinking, feeling, and then acting. You're going to act out whatever it is you're thinking, and out of the abundance of the heart, then the mouth will speak. And then before you know it, if you don't let those, if you don't take those thoughts captive, before you know it, you're running down this thing, and before you know it, you're full of fear and doubt and unbelief, and then you can't walk in the victory. Then the definition of indignation. Anger aroused, this is Webster's, anger aroused by something unjust, unworthy, and mean. I like them put that mean in there. Unjust, unworthy, and mean. The devil is out to destroy you. And you have to make a determination at the beginning of this 2020 year, no devil is going to have an input in my household. And you will kick his butt so far out, he will be sorry he ever messed with you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Yeah. Are you glad you came today? Yeah. Glory to God. John 10.10 10 says, The thief, talking about the devil, the thief does not come except to steal. Now look at that word except. The thief does not come. Accept, and this gives you the, the very reasons why he comes, those reasons listed here. This is why he, he's here, to, to steal and to kill and to destroy. Steal, whether it's stealing finances, stealing right. time, stealing uh, your job, stealing you know, uh, your house, stealing your children. Stealing, that's what he does. He came to steal. These are the reasons he came, to steal and to kill to take our life from it, to, to, kill, to, to kill your children or to kill your relatives or kill you or whatever, and to destroy, to destroy any and everything that's godly. That's why he came. He doesn't, the thief does not come. Why he does not come around. He comes around to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I've come that they may have life. Amen. Now you could have stopped right there. I came that they may have life. And you'd say, wow, that's good. He came just the opposite reason why, why the devil came, comes, is that we might have life. But it's got a comma, and they may have it more abundantly. He, in other words, he came that you may have life and have super abundant Amen. life. Amen. Super abundant life in every area of your life of your walk, every area of your, of your life. Now, you know, when, so people, when people are well-meaning Christians or well-meaning rel relatives that you know try to convince you, you know, that something God did, God allowed, God, whatever else there, point them back to John 10, 10. Amen. Point them to said, this, this, is this is pretty clear right here, you know. This is why the devil comes around. This is what Jesus did, and he didn't just come to, to put a Band-Aid on it. He came us to give us life and life more abundantly. Don't you agree? Yes. Amen. 
And you don't have, a lot of times, I mean, you know, you can stop folks, and you're not, not that you're trying to be mean spirited, but you don't have to go all the way through the Bible to clear God's name, you know, and, and to get to, to set them on the right track. You go to John 10, 10, said, here it is laid out right here. We know who's on, who's on what side, and God's on your side. You're on God's side. And he wants, he is not only giving you life, in the Amplified, he says he's given you super abundantly life. All right, also, let's look down here at, uh, let's see, Matthew 11, verse 12. Matthew 11, 12. And, the days from, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and are but the violent take it by force. So the kingdom of heaven is that until now. That means the kingdom of heaven is having, is, is having an onslaught. It suffers violence, and people have come against the word. They've come against people, and it's happening all over and continually. But it says that but us, we are the ones that are to take it by force. The, those with violent, a violent reaction against the devil. That day when that happened... And those symptoms came on Javan's body. I got violent. Yeah. I got so violent. And I talked with such a force, even to God. I said, God, either your word is true or not. I'm, I'm going to believe it's true. Mm -hmm. and, and if so-and-so can have a healthy son, then so can I. I'm not going to cry another day. I'm not going to go to bed fearful that he won't be alive the next morning. Never again. This day is over. Yeah. And I became so violent. But that's what we're talking about here, where you are determined no more. I mean, I'm talking about even, you know, when Van was talking earlier about setting aside the weights, whether it's a two-pound weight or a however many pound weight, 100-pound weight, 500-pound weight, whatever. If you are wearing glasses, there's no condemnation here. But you know what? You don't have to settle. You can say, I, I am going to have perfect vision in Jesus' name, period. Mm -hmm. I am going to have perfect vision. And I am, I am becoming violent against the enemy concerning, you know, things that we tolerate, y'all. Don't tolerate anymore. Make a decision of the heart. I am going to have 20-20 vision, and my eyes will not grow dim yeah. as long as I am alive. Do you see what I'm saying? These are things, a headache. You know, instead of running and popping a couple of aspirin, which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with. I'm not, please don't misunderstand me. But first say, let me pop a couple of scriptures here. Mm -hmm. You know, by his stripes I was healed. Headache, go! You speak to the mountain, you cast it into the sea, you doubt not in your heart, and whatever you say will come to pass. That's what his word says. So you just say, headache, go, in Jesus' name. Right now, go. Be gone. Don't come back, ever. And that's how you do it. You get that violence about you, righteous indignation that is talking about here, and take it by force. And let me give you a testimony on that. And I know some of you have heard this, and some of you haven't, but I'm, I think it fits here perfectly. Is that I, I began when I when I was a teenager, I began to have all these really severe headaches, and. I didn't know if there were sinus headaches. They always hurt right up in here, all this circle right around here. And, and when it would rain, oh my gosh, I would just, my head would just go boop, 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 boop the whole time it rained. And I just, it was, I was miserable. Was so bad. I took over-the-counter medicine, sign off, sign you tab, uh, that Lots kind of, of thing. It. And I mean, I got to the point, and when Regina and I met, I was 20, uh, 24 years old, and... I, even when I moved to Atlanta um, in 23 to work for Delta, my parents said, you know what, if you want us to, we'll pay for you to go to Emory and be tested about those headaches. I mean, that's how bad it was. And I mean, I was, I was, I, I took sign aid, sign off, that kind of thing, like candy. And I would go through sometimes, I mean, even in a week, I'd go through 30 or 40 of them in a week. And I knew, I mean, in my heart, I knew it was, you know, it was not doing my stomach or my body any good, but these headaches were so severe. And this just went on, I mean, even, even uh, like I said, during that time frame. So, uh, so in, I moved to Atlanta in 78, and so that progressed all along until, um, and really until 2000, uh, past 2000. Well, in 2003, 
or actually 2001, 2002, started listening to Andrew, myself, before, about a year before Regina did, you know, and then, of course, Regina got on board after that, and we went to the first minister's conference. It was open to the general, to the general ministers, uh, and not by invitation only, in 2003. But I made up my mind. I made a decision of the heart. I'm going to get violent in my faith. I'm not going to take any prisoners. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tolerate this. I have been tolerating this, and by that time, I mean I was in 2003. I was what? Uh, I was born in 54, 64, 74, 84, 94. I was 49 years old, and I had been suffering these since teenagers, and taking. I, I I'm, gosh, I must have taken 2,000 cyanide and sign off during that time period. I'm just guessing, but it was a huge, enormous amount, and uh, so. I'll never forget, it was, it was in October of, uh, I'm, let's see, let me get it right, October of 2004, mm-hmm. and Paul and Patsy Milligan, we had met them, um, uh, no, it was in Jan- excuse me, January of 2005, and we had met Paul and Patsy Milligan in, in August, and they were coming to our house, and they were going to minister at the church, and this is back in 2004. And um, when we met them in 2005, that's when they came in January of five. And I made my de- decision the week before that that I was this, I, I was going to abruptly cut off all that medicine and stand, not hunker down and just tolerate, but stand against those headaches. And do you know that two or three days prior to their coming to be with us? Everything was rocking along good, and I'm thinking, man, I'm making progress, all that stuff. And when they got there at the house, my head started hurting like crazy. I mean, I thought I was just going to pass out. And I said, no. And Regina said, you know, you may want to pray about, you know, we got company. We got them here, and you may want to just think, you know, I kind of wish you'd have started all this a week later after, <laughs> after they came. And that was my flesh. Exactly. And, but I and got an agreement with She you. did. She did. But I made it through. Y'all been the- there, haven't you? I okay. made it through that time. The four we're, just, we're just being honest with y'all. Can we do that? Yes. We're just real. And so, anyway, go the ahead. The four man. days they were with us, and, and so, you know, and when they left and stuff, and I thought, you know what? I did not give in to that he didn't. sinus medicine. He I didn't. did not give in. And I thought, that's good, but I... Is this the way it's going to be the rest of my life? You know, in, in other words, am I going to go three or four days and all of a sudden I've got to, you know, stand and stand and stand? Well, I just started, That's I thought, you know this what? I'm not, going to, I'm not going to think all that out because I know that just doesn't line up with the word. That's not what faith is all about. It's not trying to formulate and trying to figure out, you know, what's going to happen. All I need to know is by the stripes on Jesus' back, my head was already healed. I don't have to know what, you know, what, whether it's sinus or a combination of this or a combination of that, I just know it doesn't belong there. And so I kept standing and kept standing. And then when one, one would come, I would speak to it, speak to it. And boy, when I spoke to it, I was like, in the name of Jesus, I curse you. And, you know, I mean, I was miserable in the natural. But I promise you, after about... I don't know if was it nine months a year. It was a oh, little period of time. Yeah, it wasn't that long. No, it was it was, it was it was six months of doing that. After doing that, having that since I was a teenager, and here I'm 40, 49 years old. I, one day it just occurred to me, gosh, we had a rainstorm three or four days ago. Yeah, <laughs> but I, my head didn't hurt. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And from faith to faith to faith, and then. A little bit more, a little bit more. And do you know that that January of 2005, I have not had one sinus tablet since there. 2005, 2015, 2020, that has been 15 years. Now, from the time I was like 16 to the time I was 49, 2016, 26, 36, 46, 33 years I popped those things like they were going out of style. But yet, not a one in the last 15 years. What changed? Did I didn't go to doctors? I mean, I, it wasn't that I went and found some miracle cure or whatever else. I used the word. 
It's like Charles Capp said, I, instead of taking sign off or sign you tab, I started popping gospels. Amen. And speaking the word and declaring the word. In the, even in the parent, when, when pain would be there so much and you'd feel like you were going to vomit, it's like, I don't care. I, I can outlast you because I got the word, devil. I, I, the word is going to carry me through and I will not bow. I will not succumb to this. And then, then I took, I was thinking not too long ago about that. And I thought, you know what? Even as much much miraculous as that is, that's been 33 years, and I and I've really I don't even know he even hardly attacks me anymore. I had one about we were we were at a gospel truth conference in Chicago two years ago, and one tried to come on me for about four or five hours, and I kept speaking to that, and then it left again. But other than that, like I said, there's been no sinus medicine or anything else whatsoever. But the sheer fact that my stomach and my body was not racked with taking tens, thousands and thousands of those over that period of time, over-the-counter medicine. Because I checked, and when I had my last physical, I was healthy as a horse. There was nothing on the planet wrong with me. So I just am telling you, no matter what it is that tries right. to slow you down or stop you, and, and, and you think, I can't push past the pain, you're really not pushing past the pain. You're allowing the light to come in. You're allowing the finished work of the cross Amen. and the gospel to rule and reign in your life, which pushes out the darkness, so which pushes out the pain, which pushes out the, 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 the malfunctions in your body and, and the things in your life. So I just want to you share know, that and question. And let me say the important part of what he said a while ago, if you were listening, is months went by and he wasn't dwelling on headaches. He wasn't yeah. thinking about headaches. All of a sudden one day he said, Man, I haven't had a headache in months. Exactly. You know, I mean, it, he wasn't focused on, how do I get rid of these? He was focused on, on Jesus took Jesus care of Jesus and the Lord. Yes. See, you, you can't focus on the issues. Set it aside. You can't focus on the issues. You focus on Jesus. He will keep him in perfect peace. His mind, mind, mind is stayed upon on him. him. Exactly. So the more we keep our mind focused on him, then he will help you pass the issues. Right. You give the issues to him. You give the sickness to him. You give the financial stress to him, and you focus on him. Let him handle those things, casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. And then you will begin to easily then walk out the victory of righteous indignation. Yes. You see what I'm saying? But when you, when you go, have this righteous indignation, you determine in your heart, you, you have to draw a line in the sand. And you say, devil... You will not come over this line. That's right. You won't. It's and and oh really? Yeah, really, because I have the sword of the spirit. That's right. You will not come over this line. And it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. And you know what? That works on anything in your life. It worked for Jesus. That's right. Amen. That's right. You know what? I, I, you need to, he needs to tell this story and, and Javan will just have to be okay with it. Um, bless his heart. But he needs to tell this story because this is when I saw Van operate in more righteous indignation than just about at any other time. Javan, and I'm going to let him tell the story, but Javan had been potty trained. He was a very smart little boy, and he, he, by the time he was two, he was already well potty trained, not even quite two, but he would sleep so soundly at night. He could fall out of the bed, hit his head on the frame, and never wake up. He just was, he, when he went out, he went out. He didn't know what was going on. So you tell him the rest of this story. So anyway, when the doctor said he could uh, do this and... Uh, well, we didn't tell him what about uh, Oh, he's, he went to bed two or three times a night. And, and it was just wrecking my sleep and trying to get to drive. To, I had a 32-mile drive each way back and forth to the airport for, to work at Delta and was getting up, you know, working these ungodly hours. And <clears throat> so when the doctor told us one day that he could wet the bed until he was eight years old... And it would be normal. And it would be normal. He was three. Man, I tell you, my temperature rose in me like just like this. <laughs> we were tired of washing sheets and yeah. changing sheets mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And I, I said, I <laughs> said. Let me, tell, let me tell him what the doctor, this is so funny. So the doctor tells us, right, he said, okay, this is how you fix this. He gave us a little piece of paper. He did. He said, okay, don't give him anything to drink after 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get up with him at least three times in the night to check on him. And, I mean, just went down this list, you know, mm -hmm. and, and Van got, I mean, I could see Van just, I Van, Van was just. I took that list, 
And I went. <laughs> at, the, at the house. It did, it did. Threw that thing down. And I said, not in this house. <laughs> I had righteous indignation. Oh, my goodness. I had righteous indignation. I said, and. You went back to his bedroom. I went back to his bedroom. <laughs> and I said, and Javine was in there. Well, no, Javine was no, not in there. No. But I went over to his bed and I said, devil. In the name of Jesus, I curse you, and I curse the spirit that you bring of bedwetting. I curse the spirit of bedwetting and command it to leave this house. And and then like you came like I said, said, I said, spirit of get you out bed, of this you house. spirit of bedwetting, get out of this house right now in Jesus' name. And then I said, you know what? To this day, I don't know if there was a spirit of bedwetting. But <laughs> in that day, in that night, it was one in my house. In my house. It might not, nobody else might think there is one, but there was one that night. And so I got that, I, I spoke to that, and I said, not only are we doing that, we're going to have corresponding action right here. We're going to, I want you to give him something to drink after 6 o'clock, give him all he wants to drink. I, we're not getting up and changing uh, sheets. We're not doing, checking on him, doing, taking him to the bathroom tonight. None of that stuff that man put on that, uh, that doctor put on that list, we're going to do completely the opposite of it. That is where my faith is, and that's what happened here today because I cast it out. If I truly believe it's gone out of here, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a normal child uh, uh, sleeping situation, and, my, and mine too. And at beginning that night, he never went to bed again. Never again, y'all. Never again. Yeah. Now, you know, how many of you have ever dealt with bedwetting in your house? Okay, many of you. A lot of you, oh my goodness. And so, but I'm telling you, when you make a decision of the heart and you don't go to bed and, and lay there thinking, I wonder if he's going to wet the bed tonight. I wonder if he... No, then you're doubting. Right. See, you, you submit unto God and you resist that devil and he'll flee. And he will flee forever. But you have to be submitted unto God and you don't even focus on him. Right. You don't focus on his ploys. You don't focus on his actions. You don't focus on how he's what he's trying to do to you, yes. you just keep worshiping the Lord yes. and just keep praising the Lord and keep shouting in the Lord and keep thanking the Lord and don't let your thoughts go back to what ifs. How many of you ever done what ifs? Of course you have. All of you done what ifs. We've all done what ifs. What if? You know? And you don't look around for evidence that will verify no. what, you, what you prayed because the word says, <laughs> now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the Evidence, evidence of things, things not, not seen. seen. So you already got your evidence is your faith. That's the evidence. You have the faith of the Son of God. That is your evidence. So don't look around to see, did it work? It worked in the name of Jesus. And what happened in the spiritual realm well, man is manifesting in the natural realm. So when I told man, the doctor said up to eight years, it, it's normal. Eight years old. And, and Van said to me, that's five more years. He Lord said, not in this. Mercy, he just, not I mean, he gritted his teeth and he walked back to that bedroom and he said, no, <laughs> I mean, bed we can get out of this house. A spirit of bed we can get yeah. out of this house. And then he looked at me and he was so cute. He said, I don't even know if there is a spirit of bed we can get but it but is all a we knew, yes. whether it was or wasn't, we knew we had the faith authority and to the stand and yes. the authority and yes. the power to yes. come against yes. every ploy of Satan. And that was just a distraction. Yes. You know, he was just trying to mess with us and mess with our time and keep us from sleep. But the Bible says he gives his beloved sweet sleep. And Van said, I'm ready for this sweet sleep. Amen. And some, you know what? There's a word. Some of you out there have been dealing with insomnia. You have not been able to rest. You have not been able to rest. And the Lord is saying right now, take a hold of that precious sleep that he's provided yes. for you. How many of you have been dealing with that? I know, okay, okay. I knew there were several. And you know what? You do not need sleeping stress. tablets. You don't need no. anything like that. You don't need any, anything to aid your sleeping. Hallelujah. You've got Jesus. And Jesus said, like she said, he's given his beloved sweet sleep. And you don't Hallelujah. have to count sheep all night long. You don't no. have to do any of that kind of no. stuff like that. You just meditate. If you'll let your mind be fastened on him, stayed on him, and just let just focus in on That's him right. and who he is, That's not right. about things that are going to happen the next day or things that happened the previous day or the day you're in. You just focus on him. And I'm telling you, if you do, just stay focused on him. And when the enemy says, yeah, tapping you on the shoulder, just stay focused on him. And the next thing you know, you go, th you go kind of drift, and you, you, you know, and you all of a sudden, and you just go, you just fall off That's to right. sleep, and you're gonna have sweet dreams too. That's right. You're Anointed of the Lord, yes, visions and yes, dreams. 
Yes. Proclaim it. Start speaking it every night. That's right. See, you know what, y'all? These are practical things. Van and I didn't want to rush this because these are things you need to know. You need to know how to operate in these things. That's right. And so I, I really believe we need to stop here because there is so much more we want to share, and there's no way we're going to share it. We want to share the examples out of the Bible, the different Bible characters uh, that God told us to share in the New Testament under the New Covenant. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I believe that if we go one more week, Maybe. No, I think next, next week we get. <laughs> we, we think we get. But is this ministering to y'all? We don't want to rush anything. If this is something that's ministering to you, y'all, these are things we are just settling with. And we don't have to put up with this stuff anymore. Amen. So we'll, we'll come back. We'll, um, we'll pick up again next week. You know, um, I, I really feel like this is something very, very important. And it will help you when you learn how to operate in this. And it will help your children to see you operate in this. So then they will operate in it. And you then will be able to walk in victory in your whole house. Everybody in the house. Yes. Amen. So um, I really believe that's, let's stop right there. And um, I, I just feel like there's, man, there's so much more. There's so much more, and um, and we will we'll we'll take this into next week, and then we'll probably have another series after that. But y'all are a true blessing, and I tell you what, here in this church, we're all going to walk in righteous indignation. Yes. In fact, say it after me. I choose to walk. I choose to walk in righteous indignation. In righteous indignation. And the devil will not have his way. The devil will not have his way in my life or my family anymore. In my life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Why don't y'all stand with us, if you would? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you've never asked Thank Jesus to come into your heart as your Lord and Savior, you've never, you've never been born again, today's your day. You need to be born again. You must be born again. There's no way to get into the kingdom of God and to be with the Father except that you be born again. So if you haven't had that experience,